started. Hi, good evening. Um, nice to see you all here. Thank you for being here. I'm Renee Barrio, Head of Curatorial Affairs here at the McNay, and I'm delighted to be joined by Michael Patterson, our featured artist in our Artists Looking at Art program. So for those of you who are new to this program, it's been going on with the McNay's been um, hosting Artists look at, Looking at Art for the last 20 years. It's kind of hard to believe when I look back that we have 20 years worth of artists we've featured in this program. Um, and it was really uh, started to celebrate and to honor the artists in our own community. And so every year we select two artists to feature. This year, um, the, this fall, Michael's our featured artist, and they present their work in our galleries and then we get to have a program and conversation and learn more about their work. So um, thank you for being here. Yeah, thank, um, thank you for having me. Uh, it's very nice to be able to um, look at your work and get a more perspective. Uh, just a sort of full disclosure, Michael and I worked together. He was employed yeah. here at the McNay for some time. Yeah. So we have, um, so I, I knew him both as, an, I know him both as an artist, but also as a, as a colleague, a McNay colleague. So, um, so welcome <laughs> back. Yeah, well, thank you. Um, we're going to start uh, by, if you could just, for those of you who don't know you, uh, talk about sort of your background, sort of where you're from, mm -hmm. where you went to school, how you got to this point right here tonight. <laughs> All right, yeah, sounds good. So uh, yeah, it's been a long journey. Um, I am originally from New York City, um, the, the Bronx in particular. I also lived in Harlem as well. I moved out here when I was nine, nine years old. I was back in 2001. Uh, it was a big, big change for me, but um, you know, I basically was uh, raised, raised out here in San Antonio. Uh, doing art in terms of like um, how that, I guess, began for me. It wasn't something that I, I guess, gravitated towards really when I was younger. I was very, um, I just had like, I, I always had an imagination. You know, in, cl in class I would always, I guess, you know, just, I, I'd try to pay attention, but, <laughs> you know, yeah, I, I'd always daydream and, um, that's something that, I mean, I guess has never left me. I still have that imagination, but um, it all started for me with just like, um, honestly, anime, anime is where it started for me. I used to watch a, a show called Dragon Ball Z, and that was like, um, that was like a big thing for me, like seeing that style of drawing, it for some reason made me want to draw, you know, and then like my friends would draw and they would compare their p drawings to each other, and, I kind of wanted to jump in and do that as well, and you know, it was and nothing serious, it was just for fun, you know. Um, in terms of like the school, uh, through you know, just from elementary all the way through high school, I, like I said, like art was not really just a like a focus, a focus for me. Um, I used to play basketball all the time and go outside, play with my friends and. Just things like that. I just wasn't very focused on art itself. In um, high school, I took some art classes. I quit the basketball team. It was stressing me out too much. <laughs> and I took some art classes. Um, it was. It wasn't something like. I guess my setting wasn't very great. We uh, goofed off a little too much. and didn't take it very serious. I started to get serious about art in um, in college. Uh, and I actually didn't, you know, go straight into art classes. I actually wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I have, I've always been like interested in like science, astronomy in particular. And um, I, it's, like, it's like art was just something that I knew I enjoyed doing like in my free time, but it wasn't something that I ever thought of in terms of a lifestyle. And when I got to, I guess, when I got to um, college, I, in my second year, that's when I started taking art classes. And then that's when I started to, uh, I guess, realize that it is something that I can get better at to the point that I can possibly make something of it. And um, Where were you going to college? Yeah, and then, yeah so I started in um, San, so San Antonio College, mm -hmm. Northeast Lakeview, um, is actually, they're, they're connected, the, um, the Alamo Colleges. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I uh, started, my first art class in, in college was at Northeast Lakeview. 
I took a class at, um, or I, the art class that I did take was painting. And, and that at that campus, we couldn't use oil paint because I guess the ventilation wasn't good enough no. or some, something about the ventilation. I don't know, because oil paint is toxic to breathe in and uh, you couldn't use oil paint. So I was new to painting anyway, so I didn't really know the difference anyway, <laughs> you know, so it didn't really matter to me. So we, we, we only used acrylic paint and um, it's interesting because I haven't stopped using acrylic paint since. <laughs> so, you know, I, I guess I'm grateful that it turned out that way. Uh, let's see. Then after that, I took a drawing class, and it wasn't in the same semester. I believe I took the painting class. Then I, I kind of uh, was like, yeah, this is pretty, this is pretty good. Like I actually enjoy this. And then I decided to take the drawing class the next semester, and then that was at San Antonio College, and I ended up getting an associate's from San Antonio College. I actually didn't get a associate's in arts, I got it in uh, liberal arts. Because like I was telling y'all, I didn't know what I wanted to do. So <laughs> yeah, so I got it in liberal arts. Um, later on down the line, because uh, I did take a break from going to school. And then uh, I, no, I went to UTSA after. Then after that, I only lasted about a year. Then I took a break from, from college, it was just working. And then um, I was conti I, I continued doing art though, making pieces. And then I uh, decided to try art school. I gave that a shot. I, you know, got my, uh, just everything that was requir required of me, a portfolio, uh, uh, whatever it was like they, they asked for, you know, cover letters, things like that. And I gave it a shot and I was able to get accepted into the uh, School of, uh, Southwest School of Art at um, Southwest School of Art. Uh, I learned a lot at that, at that uh, school. It definitely kind of took me to, the, to another level. And um, I unfortunately didn't finish, but uh, I, did, I, did, I did take, uh, learn a lot and gain a lot from that experience. I know we're gonna start by looking at some works that you experienced here at the McNay. Mm -hmm. So yeah. um, before you came on staff here, did you, were you a frequent visitor? Did the McNay have some impact on your kind of formation? Yes. I, so I believe that my first time coming to the McNay was during a, a class, a class visit. Can't tell you which class, you know, but that, that was my, my first experience. Uh, ever since then, I would just, I honestly would just come to the McNay just to get inspiration to even just do art to like, you know, just whenever I felt that I was having a hard time creating or whenever I felt like I just needed that motivation, I would come, I would come here and just, sometimes I just would sit, just look at an art piece, you know, draw, you know, but it was a place that I would visit frequently. I was curious about the, the range of, of things you selected to share. We're gonna look in just oh, a minute. Yeah. Um, and so it'd be interesting to see how you kind of pulled the, all, the thread that winds kind of through all of those and pulls right, them all together. Right. It's all connected. So we'll start with this amazing Kehinda Wiley painting that we had. It was unfortunately not in our collection, but it was presented here during the exhibition 30 Americans in 2018. Yeah, yes. So yeah, that was, a, that was just amazing, amazing um, to see that up close in person. You know, his work is just, honestly, he's one of the artists that has inspired me most. Had you seen a work in person before this, or is this the first time you'd seen his actual painting? I've seen, I've seen a painting, it was not that big though. It was a smaller piece at another, uh, Museum, um, the uh, San Antonio Museum mm -hmm. of Art. Yeah, so it was a smaller piece, but this right here, I mean, <laughs> that was, I mean, it's, it's hard to really, I mean, this, this picture doesn't capture it, obviously, but it's hard to explain, you know, how it feels to experience that. And what, what draws you to Kahinda Wiley's work in right, particular? Yeah, 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 so one, the, the actual style itself, I, 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 his execution, like the way, he, the way he actually paints the figures, like he uses like this, it's like the, the actual tones of the skin has like this, like uh, this vibrance that I really enjoy. Um, it just, it works though, you know? And that, that's something that really stands out to me. His subject matter is very strong. I think that it is so strong that it is something that he's been doing for years, right? 
that that's also I like I, li I like that creativity. You know, like taking two things that are completely like not connected and putting them together, and then like just you know making something new. I just think that's amazing. And then another work from that same exhibition from Thirty Americans is Carrie James Marshall's piece. And for those of you who know who Carrie James Marshall's work, this is a little atypical from the pieces that we kind of know yeah. that he's sort of well known for. It is. It is. Yep. I remember when I first saw it, uh, I stood at that piece for probably 20 minutes, just staring at it, you know. Um, the execution, again, I believe it's done with a, it was a acrylic, it's a, um, acrylic paint on a um, panel, I believe. And then it being acrylic, right, me being an artist who gravitates towards acrylic, acrylic paint, it really spoke to me, seeing his work and, um, you know, just in person like that, you know, and it felt like I was I was witnessing just the work of a master, you know, just I, like this is the level that it takes, you know, and that that really was very very inspirational. And were you familiar with Carrie James Marshall's work before? Uh, just through through reading, mm -hmm. you know, through school, but not mm -hmm. I never seen any of his work in person. Mm -hmm. That's the only piece I've seen in person. And then now something completely different. <laughs> yeah. Right? right from our own collection. Right. Right. So right, yes, this is part of the McNeese collection, and I have. Uh, I remember when it was on display and, and seeing it in person. It's just a large piece, and uh, you see, it's a it's a lithograph, right? Mm -hmm. You know, but there's like the way like the way she's positioned, right? The way the way is the execution for this. It's something about it, you know, it, it was something that I just always would think of, like, it was like a very, uh, I don't think I've seen anything like this before, mm -hmm. you know, even though, I mean, this is what it was done, 18, okay, yeah, 18, 1897, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, the purpose, so these lithographs done back then, they were like for like um, promoting things, right? Right, they so this is like an advertisement. Advertisement, right, right. right. But it just mean I don't know. To me, it just spoke to me in a different way. I just liked that setup, and it kind of took my mind to different places. Like, wow, like what if she was floating in, you know, space, or what if she was floating? I don't know. It just it was something about it, like the way the hair is waving, like that looks like she, you know, low gravity or whatever. I don't know. But it for it to be done in eighteen ninety seven, and it just looks. I just like the way it's put together. It's very creative. So when you worked here, you worked in the security area. Yes. So you spent a lot of time in the, in the galleries, right? I, I, a lot I of time lot, looking at things. A lot of time, yes. <laughs> and did you find that, did you, was that beneficial, do you think? It, it was beneficial. Um, so the beneficial part about it was that it was like I was just doing what I would normally do anyway, which is visit the museum. <laughs> Basically, I was getting paid to look at art, right? Uh, so that, that's been that's the beneficial part about it. Um, I, um, I yeah, I really I, I I really enjoyed that aspect of it, right? To be able to just just me being an artist, I, I was inspired basically every day. It was like an energy that you feel in every every gallery, you know, and it definitely helped. It helped me get motivated to. Uh, to continue, you know, just continue creating because I have pauses in time where I'm, I'm not making work just because of certain things happening in life or, you know, just the way, you know, the way I feel, things like that. But this, it definitely, definitely got me back on track working, working at the McNay. So this painting was just shown recently in, in their last yeah. banner exhibition. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. F I, I first time I seen it was years ago, actually. Um, not even at the, um, where it was, it was displayed the uh, Donald Moffat exhibition, right? right. It was current, uh, or it was in Nature Cult, just was, yeah, most recently. Most recently, right. but um, yeah, I first seen it years ago. Um, I believe it was just in the, just somewhere else. It wasn't like part of the special the exhibition, just or it was in the collection gallery. Just, but just right, exactly. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, just thing that you know just stood out to me about it was see, like at the time that I was looking at these pieces, I was searching for a, um, I guess, so. I chose, I chose that I, I really enjoy using acrylic paint and I chose that over oil. I wanted to be able to create with acrylic at a level that people are able to create with oil. Mm -hmm. I want to find a way to do that. And um, that's something I'm still striving for, but you know, see, seeing this piece being done with acrylic and just, you know, the level, the level that it is, 
you know, just done at it. It, sh it told me, it showed me that, yeah, it's possible, it's possible for acrylic paint to be taken to these heights, you know? And I, I just needed to know that. Did you ever work in oil at all? I, I have, yes. Mm -hmm. I, um, so my time at the Southwest School of Art, we, we yes, we, we, we used oil, mm -hmm. you know, it was required, right? Mm -hmm. um, through uh, the painting class that I took and I actually, I didn't have an issue using it. Like, I, I liked using it, but there were certain things about it that I, I prefer acrylic over. Do you over. feel that acrylic lends itself to your subject better? It, yes, and... Think about that. Yeah, that's a good question. It, that's a good question. It is. Right, so this one right here, um, so... Y'all had a exhibition with just his work in the patio gallery. Correct. There was this, a group of, right. I think the McNay owns four or five of his paintings, right. five or six of his paintings, right? right. And and so was, we, had, we had a small grouping of them. Right. That was, that was years ago. It was just his work and acrylic paint again, you know. But like, if, I, if you, if you uh, haven't seen a, a work by Carl Rice Embray, um, or if you have, like, you should understand, like, the level, the level of which, you know, he uses, like, or he executes, you know, with acrylic paint is, like, I mean, honestly, like, you would think it was oil, right? Like, because, like, oil paint is the most, so the most realistic, you know, the photorealistic paintings that you think of are usually done with, like, oil paint, right? Um, or at least that, that's what I know. I've realized that most of them are done with oil. But to see his work being that photorealistic and it all be acrylic, that once again, at the time where I was searching for that, I mean, I guess validation to work in acrylic, <laughs> it kind of, it, it basically told me like, yes, this is, this is absolutely possible. You're giving me this whole new appreciation for acrylic paintings in our collection, because I haven't really <laughs> thought about that before. <laughs> yeah. But it's like you're pointing all these great paintings out that are acrylic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna go back a little. 2003, your first drawing. So yes. I, when, when I saw this slide, I thought, are these, are these seriously your first drawings or are these your first drawings that you're presenting? Mm -hmm. So it was about during that time where I was saying that we used to like kind of just draw for fun, uh, pair our drawings to each other, things like that back in middle school. I might have drawings when I was even younger than that, but I mean, I'd have to ask my mom where they were at. <laughs> I don't know, but it was just a thing where I didn't really draw for fun until until then. So I consider these my first drawings because these are drawings that I wanted to draw. Do you still have these? Uh, I still have them, yes. Uh, they're like in a, in a binder that I've had since since middle school, since sixth grade. Uh, so, you know, they're hard to look at for me, but, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and what is the source for this imagery? All right, that's, that's a great question. So. Back then, we we used to go to the computer lab and go on Google, search Dragon Ball Z, and then <laughs> and then print out the images. Like we weren't really supposed to, but print out the images and uh, draw them during like our free time. Take them home, you know, draw them um, at home. But yeah, it was just printouts from off the internet, and then just uh, try try your best to tracing was frowned upon. We we absolutely. Did not tolerate tracing. Who who say when you say we? Who is that? Like your, just your my group? friends, your my group? friends. Yeah, like everybody, like you know, that I used to just draw with. You know, back then when I was in middle school, we just that was just frowned upon. So we we had to put the picture side by side and try our best to, you know, draw it, draw it right. So. Mm -hmm. And are these color pencil or uh, crayon or what's? It's not a while, so. It's like a mix, mix of things. I would say, definitely, yeah, color pencil. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna jump 10 years, 2003, yeah. 2013, mm -hmm. yes. your first painting. Yep, yep. Okay, so this is during that class that I was telling you about the, uh, the, the painting class. Is this at Northeast Lakeview? Lake North at Northfield's Lakeview, uh -huh. yeah, where, um, you know, we had to use acrylic paint. <laughs> but it, it um, was the final, the final project and this, it was, had to be a self-portrait. And uh, yeah, I basically took everything I learned that year and 
did what I, you know, my, my instructor helped with it. Like it, it wasn't, it wouldn't even be at this point if my instructor didn't help me get to that point. But it was, uh, it was promising, you know, when it, when it was done and, you know, the feedback that I, that I got, it was uh, something that made me, you know, realize that maybe I should continue, continue doing. What's that. the scale of this painting? Uh, let's see, about, say about 18 by, or 16 by, uh, is it 16 by 20? About so 16 not by quite life size, by. your head's not quite No, 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 no it's a little smaller, about 16 cool. by 20, yeah. Mm -hmm. And what's the background? I was curious about the background. The background's, you know, it's hard to tell, but it was supposed to be uh, Madison, Madison Square Garden, I believe. Uh-huh. Well, not Madison, Madison Square Garden, not Madison Square Garden. Uh, Manhattan Times Square, sorry. Oh, <laughs> Times Time Square. Square. Yeah, I, I don't know what I'm thinking. Madison Square Garden. I'm a Knicks fan, so I mean, yeah. <laughs> but what, Times Square. And was it made from a photograph? Did you uh, reference a photograph? It, it was right. We had to take a photo just specifically for that uh, that project. Got it. Yes. Mm -hmm. So here we move to the next year, 2014. Yeah. Next year, yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is during that drawing class that I took the next year, and um, yeah, just kind of building on that you know, I guess uh, confidence that I gained from making that last painting for the uh, last, um, you know, class that I was in. And once again, it was just a self-portrait project. I can't remember what time in the year this was, but at some point in that, um, that year, we had to do a self-portrait uh, project. And are these three yeah. individual portraits or are there? Yeah, they're, okay. they're all, all three individual, mm -hmm. yeah. These were also when these are also from the same class, yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, the one, make sure we're on the right, yeah. So the one, the one on the left is that was actually that's actually on display. Like that picture right there is actually on display. At, it was, I mean, it's still, I mean, obviously it's not anymore. But at the time, it was on display at the uh, like the school, uh, San Antonio College. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it was just a still life, and I got we had the choice of the subject matter, so I chose, of course, you know. And when these, life. you were actually observing the the objects, right? Yeah, so yeah. I just arranged it, mm -hmm. and then just from observation. And did you just always have this kind of facility to render? Because your rendering is quite beautiful, and it's very um, realistic rendering, and it seems like that's something you you have this facility to do. Was did sorry, it seems like that was from the beginning? It was there. Uh, I, I guess so. I guess so. I, I, I wouldn't say I necessarily noticed it really. Like, see, like what I consider good would not necessarily be the things that, <laughs> the things that I create, you know, like I, I, it's like I'm striving for something, you know, but you know, so maybe if someone else sees it, they're like, oh yeah, that's, that's really good. But like, to me, I'm just like, uh, it could be better, you know, or it could, you know, all the time I'm like that. But yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe I did have that back then. I can't, I can't say for sure, but you know. This piece is actually uh, pretty significant. I consider this the first piece where I just like took an image and just altered it and it made it look the way I wanted. So, you, it was like a found so, image. So this is a, right. It was a found. It was this is a person that um, I used to follow on Instagram. She unfortunately uh, she is not with us today. She, you know, she passed. But um, yeah, you know, I just I I used her um, <clears throat> her image, her uh, picture, and then I just kind of just arranged it a certain way and I altered the features and things like that on the face, but this was like, this was like the first piece though that I could, I could really think of. I mean, in terms of like being completed, mm -hmm. like completed, like finished artwork that I just kind of just, you know, kind of just had fun with and made it look the way I wanted to. It's not completely, it doesn't look, like if you look at the actual source image, it's not, you know, you could tell it's the source image, but it was altered enough for it to be its own, its own image. And. Um, when you're in your studio, when you work in your in your practice, mm -hmm. do you work on just try to focus on one piece at a time, or do you have a lot of things going all over the? So I only yes, I can only do one piece at a time. I wish I could do more, but that's just how it is for me. That's how my mind works. So I can only focus on one piece at a time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what about the title here, Wisdom? 
the wisdom yeah so it so yeah right so i got that from at the time the term wisdom was like a term for like i guess like a woman who just is like i guess everything basically she's like everything to you she like has like a combination of a lot of different traits that are all good she's like your she's your wisdom you know mm-hmm. Oh yes, I actually sold that piece. Um, it was it was done. It was a commission piece, and uh, yeah, pretty straightforward. Tim Duncan, <laughs> <laughs> two-time MVP. <laughs> so, no, there's a shift here. So right, and see now if you think of my first drawings, and then we go to here. Mm-hmm. You know, see it's like. Uh, these are this this is from the same anime you know uh i guess this is kind of what i was striving for right as as a kid i was striving for i guess being able to create something like at that level i don't draw like these characters like um as much anymore but yeah at the time i used to draw i still do anime all the time (laughs) definitely at at that time what's the scale on these so the one, on, yeah, the one on the left, uh, that one is about, yeah, about 16 by, about 16 by 20. Mm-hmm. So, I, yeah, it's about 16 by 20. And then this one on the right is it's bigger. It's definitely bigger. It's about, it's about 20, no, 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 maybe 24 by 30. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you, have you thought about working at a much larger scale or is that kind of intimidating to you or just it, not practical or it's not well at first yeah I was, it is an intimidating thing right to work at that scale because you, you do want to complete the piece you know and um you know it, it can be it can be intimidating but i do actually want to work at a larger scale it, it does require certain things though it requires you know because you have to transport the pieces as well right you got to be able to have the actual space to create a piece that large as well too so it just it requires certain things but i do i do strive to be able to create like much larger pieces and okay i'm just my ignorance i don't know this world are these existing characters or these created characters these are existing characters yes so um, from from the same series okay Um, it's like there's a series uh, known as dragon ball um it's and it's an anime uh yes and your audience for these. So I assume a lot of the audience that sees these knows these characters, right? Yeah, absolutely. So like they're very recognizable characters, like um, very, very popular. Mm -hmm. So Goku and Vegeta, they're just very, very recognizable. All right, yeah, right here. This is, uh, what what year? I believe we were in 2015. 2016. 2016. Yeah, 2016, right. 16. 2016. So this is a, a piece that I, I did for my mom um so yeah like my other pieces this this is done in acrylic paint is this your mother uh, this is yeah, yeah oh yes yes it's a portrait is, of your this mother is my portrait <laughs> yes this okay. is a portrait of my mother yes um yeah so it was just yeah it was just a gift a gift to her at the time it uh you know looking at it now it's uh it's it's just interesting because at the time when i did it it was amazing you know like but it's like when i and it still is still is but it's especially like what her, you know what she's wearing, like her her top. I think that's done well. But just when I look at it now, it's just not you know I, the execution when it comes to like skin tone things like that. You know, I just was lacking in knowledge when it came back to that back then. But um, it, it was it was a great attempt. When you look at a painting like that, do you think how you would have done it? You would do it differently now? Yeah, yeah, like I, I, I do <laughs> absolutely. And could you talk about the background? Yeah. So the background. So it's just. So, okay, that's, yeah, it's interesting. So I actually started with some warm grays going on one side, mm-hmm. working my way from light value all the way to dark. Then I did cool grays on another side, working my way all the way from um, light to dark. So I was kind of playing around there. And then like the whole like in between borders with like the dots were supposed to represent like space just because of my whole fascination with the subject um putting 
certain things that aren't connected, just putting them together. And that's just mm -hmm. something that I've always uh, kind of enjoyed doing. Yes, and then um, the same time period, so I kind of still followed that. This is someone you know? Formula. Uh, no, actually it's not, but this was a um, commission piece for, for someone. Um, so, yeah, yeah, so it's already been, you know, sold off to, to that person. It was a family member of that person, but, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you get a lot of commissions? Uh, not, not really. You know, I was open to it. You know, at the time, I was open to it. Um, now I'm not really mm -hmm. open to it as much. But at the time, I was open to it, just searching for what I wanted to do with my art, searching for, you know, what, you know, maybe I think it was just like kind of people's response, like, oh, man, this is really good. Can you do this for me? And then I'm just like, oh, yeah, sure, right? And then, you know, you charge them a little bit, and then you do it, you get paid. But I found that that wasn't really the path that I enjoyed doing. Like, I didn't, I didn't like doing that. Yes, Malcolm X. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, 2017, back then, uh, I was heavy on, on, like, just, like, those type of, you know, people who lived during that time. Mm -hmm. You know, just, um, just their, you know, their values, things that they strive, strive for, and, uh, you know, I just think it was, it was just unfortunate, uh, you, know, you know, for someone's life to end the way that his did, and uh, it was interesting. I posted this on Instagram, and his daughter actually saw it. Yeah, she actually saw it, and she, uh, she like, commented on the picture and stuff, and followed me. It was really cool. Yeah, but, but um, yeah, Malcolm X, uh, Malcolm X uh, is a person that I just think was a, was a great leader uh, during his time. I'm, I'm sorry, I can't understand. I don't have to decipher the image on the right. Oh, yeah, so that's like the newspaper uh, strip. That's kind of, so that's what it is. It's like a, uh, it's a newspaper article. Oh, okay, I see. Yeah, you, right. Mm -hmm. Thank you, because it was hard to. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm interested in that design, too, the, around the kind of perimeter, mm -hmm. kind of looking back at your portrait of your mother and that kind of diamond uh, yes, design. Yes, yes. In, that something mm. this kind of this kind of graphic like repetitive pattern motifs mm. interesting how it appears. Yes, yes. Oh yeah, um, yeah. So this is a. I guess I went. Well, let's see. I'm not sure if this is the first self portrait I've done since school, but this is outside of. This is not an assignment though. This is right. just something that I just I just did. You know, just for my own. Um, during my own time. And yeah, so yeah, it's called World One. It's just a reference to, you know, Super Mario, uh, Super Mario. So when you play that game, right, because uh, that's a video game, and when you play it, each each world is kind of titled that way, World One, you know, and then World One point this, and then you go to the next world, World Two, and you know, so I just kind of referenced that. Um, I was just having fun, you know, uh, when so I, are yeah, you yeah, painting yeah. a constellation in the sky? Is that what you're doing? I am. Yeah, uh -huh. that's, that's uh, actually the sign for Taurus. Oh, uh, that was, that's that's what I am. I'm a Taurus. Yeah. And what are these other kind of motifs? Right. So, this is these like all the all, everything in this image is actually all referenced in Super Mario. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, the coin, the the box with the question mark. You know the, the the pipes, the 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 little star in the corner, the cloud that he's floating on. Everything is kind of like referencing that that game. <laughs> At the time, I was 25, so I put 25 coins. <laughs> I collect I collected 25 coins, and then in the top left, I only, only had one life, right? I'm not like Super Mario where you get multiple lives, right? We only we only get one, so I got one life, and then I have 365. Uh, I guess. That's my time remaining just to reference the year, right? So, you know. <laughs> yeah, that was the that was the year of Black Panther. Yeah, that was a that was a, that was a great um that was a great time. When I first when I first came out, uh, I was very excited about that. A lot of people were. And uh I really liked that character. I thought the character was pretty pretty cool. I wanted to, you know, I liked the image that was just, the source was just um 
it's a photo that I found and kind of just wanted to, you know, try to recreate that and uh, the texture of his vest, things like that was very interesting to me. And the background's really lovely. Oh yeah, thank you. And that, that kind of references his character. His character was, uh, I believe he's called Golden Jaguar. Um, so kind of just references of that. Mm -hmm. The other thing that strikes me, which is particularly in this painting, is the way you're able to kind of capture the low light hits the surface. Mm -hmm. So the way the light kind of um, kind of illuminates the edge around the perimeter of the, ar of the arms and around his head and mm -hmm. his hair. It's yes. very sensitively done, really beautifully done. Thank you, thank you. Yep, yep, I have a lot of fun making that piece. Yep, yep. Oh, yes, this one. Um, Yep, we're on the same time period. So uh, this is actual uh, some music artist, a singer, uh, Janae Aiko. I yeah, I really I listen. I, I mean, especially during that time, I still listen to her music a lot. Like I really enjoy her music. I th think she makes really good music with a lot of uh, substance. But uh, that's my opinion. But the this image, you know, you know, I, I like I'm just kind of messing around. Like it once again, like we like shapes and. You know, this time's kind of like I'm playing with like the idea of like a portal, you know, and uh, I guess this idea is just in my head, right? I just kind of just want to just see how it will look, you know. And, and again, this kind of geometric patterning around it, so this right. is kind of your, your, your thing. Yeah, right, right, definitely, sure. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, another another self-portrait. Um, so, yeah, once again, this is just outside of... Uh, School, something I did in my own time. Uh, done in acrylic uh, again. Uh, yeah, what was this called? Oh yeah, space time travel. So it's kind of just like, you know, you kind of start start here as this kid, and then you kind of work your way to like a place that you would like to be. Hey, there's pieces somewhere on display. Who knows? But just kind of, you know, playing with that idea, and uh, just kind of going going from there. And you're kind of set against this uh, night sky? I, I am, yeah. Uh, in, or infinity? Uh, t infinity, the space, whatever you, you want to call it, you know, that was just something that, that was, that. I mean, that that, that subject, you know, astronomy, just, that was just absolutely, that was one of the most, you know, fascinating subjects for me growing up, and uh, especially at that time as well. So I would definitely incorporate it in a lot of my stuff. And yeah, there's another one. Man, I, I was doing a lot that year. That was <laughs> the same year. Wow. Uh, yeah, so uh, this actually kind of makes me think of my recent work, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, with the whole. So this, this, these kind of screens, the sliding screens. The sliding screen door. Right. Yeah. Look, is this, this, just, is this like the, one of the first times you used that motif, right? It, it is actually the first time. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, this is uh, just, yeah, just kind of just playing with that, you know, interaction with the screen door and what, what, you know, like what if, you know, he's kind of entering and, but like, where's he coming from, right? And just lots going on there, you know, it, it, you're like, yeah, I guess it's kind of like Japan, but then you start looking in the sky and you see all these other stuff, like, wait, wait, maybe, it, no, it's not, you know. I don't know, it's kind of taking your mind places, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 2020, yeah. Yep, yep. So that, that was a, that was a, uh, during that time, you know, so because we just came, we just went from 2018, and then we just jumped to 2020. In 2019, I, it was an off year, you know, I didn't, I didn't do, I didn't do much of anything. Mm-hmm. I was just, Basically, you know, just just going to, um, just working at that time. Actually, that's really all I was doing was working. And I used to work at a at a school. Um, and uh, shout out, shout out to one of the students. We got a student in the crowd right now, so shout out, <laughs> shout out, <laughs> shout out. Thank you for coming. But um, yeah. So yeah, Riley used to work at a school. So you know, I just had a lot of things that you know, other things I was focusing on at the time, and. Is Charlene a yeah. person you know? Oh yes, Charlene is a person that I did know back in um, back when I was living in New York. Charlene's actually the first friend that I remember. We uh, used to we used to get uh, 
Like you said, we used to get baby, what, what, how do you say it? Uh, baby set together? Baby <laughs> set? I don't know, but yeah. Right. right, right. You, were, you were together with the baby baby with, with the babysitter, yeah. Okay. That's how, yeah, that's how we, we, we Got it. met. Right. And um, it's just referenced the last time I seen her was uh, in, a, in a train station. We, uh, at the time, we haven't seen each other in years. But um, I remember running into her, and then our, we were both with our our families, and we and we were going to the same place, the train station. But um, they were on the other side of the tracks. So their train was going one way, ours was going the other. And then I just remember seeing her, uh, you know, just one last time. I looked out, I looked out the window of the train, and um, I looked out, and then I saw her looking through her window, and then she she waved by, and the train's already was taking off. Uh, pretty surreal moment, but. You know, kind of, kind of, kind of stuck with me. Was that the stop you were at, 100? Yes, yes. And then, but you have this, inserted these kind of Japanese screens into this, I, I, I into did. the subway. I did, I did. So it's like, so what's happening is, think of it as a doorway, right? That's leading to this, this memory, right? This time period. Uh -huh. Okay. And then here you have a defender someone who is defending this memory because it is a precious memory to me. It's something that is very important. And that is essentially her, that's her duty. Her duty is to protect that memory specifically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this piece is, uh, yeah, there's another piece I was doing during that time, around that time, so it's 20, uh, 2021. Uh, this is actually a standalone piece. There's not another piece um, in the series for this one. I would like to continue it, but you know, just uh, we still have, still have time to work on that. And is it based on somebody you know, or is this invented? No, this is yeah, this is this is invented completely. Just a created character. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. But um, it is based off of a um, Japanese. Like a like a legend, like a uh, so there's a swords, a swordsman, you know, a blind swordsman known as um, I'm, I'm gonna say it wrong. All I know is the last part, but Ichi is his name ends with Ichi. And then there's actually like a woman that was like um, like a character that they uh, they made a movie out of, um, based off of him, but they named her Ichi. But anyway, they're 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 blind, and they have the ability to still sense things around them and fight and still navigate the world. But, being, but, but blind though, right, you know? Huh. So I was kind of thinking about that when I made this piece. And now we're, now we're here. Oh yes, yes, this is the time we're in right now. So uh, this piece is, yeah, of the system. I guess, I, yeah, I guess that'll be the first piece I made during that year. Um, what is the system? Just a lot, a lot going on here, yeah. <laughs> so the system represents just the, I guess like the structure, right? The structure of the society, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so you could just say like this character is in like a certain, you know, living in like a certain like society, a certain setup. And in this system, he, I guess, feels as though he's a, you know, like there's bondage, right? Physically, like he physically is bond. Then you have like this, like this mind, his mind is being bond as well, you know? But uh, He's breaking through though, because you see the chains are broken. Then you see this uh, this this headset. There's a cord connecting to it, which is already broke. It's broken, you know. It's cut, and that represents the liquid coming out. Represents like being like it's like you're being the dark liquid represents being in the dark. So like you're being, you know, you're being blinded from, you know, just being who you are, your true self, right? So it's like he's happy because he's breaking through that. Now there's a lot of symbolism and metaphor in your work and a lot mm -hmm. to decifer. Mm -hmm. So uh, how, how, how does your audience get that? How does your audience know that, right? Or is that important yeah. that your audience know all those kind of details? Uh, it, that, I guess it, it would be nice for my audience to, uh, I guess, come to that conclusion. I, will, I would like that. Um, but it's okay. It's okay for them to know the details as well because the way I look at it is that if it doesn't take away from the piece, me telling you, then it's okay, you know? And I think it adds to the piece if I, mm -hmm. if I tell you or if I explain it. So now we're getting into the work we're seeing. Yeah, so these are the actual pieces on display. 
Um, yeah, so it just basically starts off with like ideas, and then from there you you know you get the painting right. But yeah, so the left side is just kind of just sketching, you know, I guess concept art, and then we got the completed piece on the. So you're making right side. preliminary drawings and mm -hmm. ideas and working on composition yeah. first. Yes. Yes. Did you use that for every painting? No, not every, not every painting. Just um, that's something that I am going to continue to do, like now, because I, I enjoy, I enjoy that process. And this is the, the other other painting. Yes, this on the is, on the right. Uh, that's the other one. Yep. And then um, this is actually yeah. So I actually talked about the Charlene piece earlier. Mm -hmm. So this is just like a different take on that, right? Like an alternate take on that. And um, yeah, so basically has, a, it has basically the same meaning there, like little things that are different, you know, references, things of that nature thrown in there. But um, that's, that's the idea, that's, the, that's what it's, the, the memory that it's drawn from. Oh yeah, yeah, current project and development. So, yes. Yeah, yeah, so that's just another, you know, little uh, piece that I'm working on right now. So it's part of the same series, the Protectors and Memory series. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah, so this memory will actually be touching on a memory that I have in San Antonio, uh, my time in high school. So we will, uh, we'll see. What, Is this a person you we'll know? see where that goes. No, it's not. Okay. I uh, actually just, yeah, I made that person as well. Just kind of created it, uh -huh. created her. And uh, it's always fun to kind of see how these, uh, these faces are gonna turn out because I really, I really never actually know for sure how they're gonna turn out, and they, they, they look bad sometimes. They look bad at, like they, they, she had a really ugly face. Like she had a really bad face. You know, like, you know her, you know, proportions are like just things are just off. And uh, but we got there. We got there. <laughs> yeah. Great. All right, Michael. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, maybe, they, maybe we could turn the lights up and see if anybody has any questions or, yes. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yes, absolutely. That's a great question. Uh, thank you. So, Yes, uh, so I, that Japanese like influence, it comes from, so I've always been influenced by Japanese culture. It's something that, you know, I've been drawn to through like different, like, like media. The first, I guess, me, like source that I could think of was a movie called The Last Samurai. I don't know if anyone's seen that. Yeah, so The Last Samurai, that was like a starting point. When I saw that, it, <laughs> like it really it made me want to explore our culture more you know it because it was like it's like this character right um he's this foreigner and he's taken in this culture for the first time and you're seeing it from his perspective and yeah that that movie right there kind of made me you know that was like the launching point for me to like look into it on my own you know and when i did that i started to realize like wow you know, I, I agree with a lot of this. I agree with the discipline. I agree with the, you know, just just the different values, you know, the things that, that you know, like just the samurai itself, like the way that the samurai would um, have like, like, like a code of honor, things like that. You know, just certain things that I just really, I was really drawn to, you know, and I like to incorporate it into my work because it is something that, I feel like ever since then, I have like incorporated into my life as well, my lifestyle as well. Which is actually another question I have for you. Uh, I know you had in one of the, the pictures you had the, the words from the beginning in mind. I think that's the Korean thing. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, so that's like the Zen, like a Zen, Zen thing. I, I, I have, yes, I, I have incorporated that. So like, beginner's mind, right, Shoshin, that. Is supposed to mean like to approach everything as if you are basically doing it like for the first time, right? Like don't 
you know, even if you, you know, you, you could have a lot of knowledge on something, right? You could have a lot of uh, experience, you know, on, on something, whatever it may be, but you can't close your mind to getting better. You know, and Shoshin is about having a beginner's mind, you know, keeping it open to, to learn, to get better, to improve, you know, to stay grounded. And I, I, I incorporate that into my life. Yeah, yeah, those are great questions, thank you. Do you have a question? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's a good, good question. So, um, I mix a lot. I do mix a lot. Um, no, no, there, no, there are times where I get specific colors. There are times. Uh, I, I have, I have started with a base like just three colors and then kind of just mix, you know, but that was just, you know, when I just didn't, wasn't able to actually get the colors I needed. But, you know, I, I do, I do get the colors that I need. I, it's rare that I just use them straight out the tube and don't mix though. I, I, I never really do that. Like if I have like a skin tone, something that I'm, um, you know, create like just a skin tone I'm creating, right? I, I want to, you know, use different colors you know, mix different colors into it to kind of create the skin. So I don't want to just like get brown and just paint brown on the kind of like I, you know, no, like I have to like create the brown itself, right? So there's a lot of mixing that goes on, but um, there's more than three colors though. Um, <laughs> you know, you, right, right. But I'm drawing from different colors though. Mm -hmm. Where did you find that sense of confidence to show up and get that really big look? Oh, okay. Um, that's, that's good. That's good. I guess it, in terms of like, if you, purity of the color, you will lose it if you only have those three, you know, colors. So I think it was more so about having just like a sh strong colors, right? That's, that's, that's what's important. And uh, I don't think it's impossible to get to that realism. I think that's always possible, but it's not as, you know, it's, it, it's a little easier, I guess, when you have like a wider range of colors, you know. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, you're welcome. Thank you. We have one more question here. Yes. The, uh, oh, yeah. Right, right. 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 Right, I guess that I should like that I'm, that I'm qualified to make right work that I feel connected to, you know, um, just all these different connections that I have, these different interests, you know, they all or beliefs, whatever they they all. Um, I think in that piece they kind of came together, right? They all find a way to come together in different ways throughout my throughout my work. Um, that piece is different from a lot of other pieces. There's a lot going on in there, but uh, yeah, yeah. Michael, I want to thank you again for yes, sharing all of this thank insight. So it's really, really lovely. And thanks all of you for being here tonight. Um, yeah, appreciate thank that. You. Thank you. Thank you.